Union Pacific Fast 40s from Athern Ready to Roll, right here on DG Model Works. If you would like to see more content from my channel, be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified of future videos. Now a little history on the real Union Pacific Fast 40s. Uh, back in the early 70s, uh, Union Pacific started delving into high-speed rail transportation. So they uh, created a program where they were taking uh, existing SD40-2s and basically re-gearing them to run 80 miles per hour as opposed to the 65 miles per hour. In doing that, they renumbered them into the 8000 series road numbers like you see here, and they ran with the DDA-40X Centennials. Partway through the program, Union Pacific just decided to have EMD build them brand new SD40-2s with this revised gearing. The new ones from EMD had some slight differences from the ones that Union Pacific already owned, and I will go over some of the differences later in this video because these models depict some of the differences. As Union Pacific headed into the 80s, it was no longer cost effective for them to continue the high speed uh, transportation. Uh, so all the SD40 2s got reverted back and renumbered. I've been a huge fan of the Ready to Roll line from Athern uh, over the last couple of years since they started uh, installing Economy sound and dual sugar cube speakers. And I'll tell you, the, it, the sound is amazing and I think these are a great, great value. These ready-to-roll locomotives uh, come either DC, where you can add your own decoder later on, or they come with Econami sound. And here is a quick start guide for the Econami decoder, your exploded parts diagram. It, these do come with uh, extra uh, detail parts. Uh, this is uh, fuel tank piping that you can install yourself. I actually did it on one of these so I can show you. And uh, it does come with uh, some car track tags and stuff uh, that you can install yourself if you would like. Even though this is the uh, ready to roll line, it is nicely detailed and has plenty of uh, separately applied parts. Along with LED lighting, I have the headlight lit and you notice the beacon up there. It's not extremely bright, um, you should be able to see it, uh, but you do have the firecracker antenna, separately applied uh, wipers, grab irons here, grab irons down the front, coupler cut lever, MU hoses, and a McHenry scale coupler. I have uh, no complaints about the uh, paint, everything is nicely done there. Since these models are a representation of the real ones, you'll notice simulated canvas sunshades just like the real ones had. Now that is actually a separately applied metal painted to look like canvas. And just like uh, all Athern locomotives, they do have sliding windows and your standard truck detail. Nothing uh, extremely over the top there. Nice fan detail. Taking a look at the back, you have the separately applied grab irons. There's one up here too. A coupler cut lever, MU hoses, and even simulated uh, spare knuckles. You also notice the rear LED light. That's another reason I like these uh, ready to rolls uh, from the last couple years. All LED lighting in these. You will notice there are no ditch lights on these models. Uh, they did not have ditch lights back in the 70s, so this is just like the real ones. Uh, the only lighting on these locomotives are the headlights, rear lights, and the beacons. Even though these come from the ready to roll line, they do have a number of road number specific details. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that Union Pacific converted some of their own locomotives and had EMD build new locomotives for them with the high speed gearing in it. 
and that there were differences between them. I can show you the differences with these models. The big difference that stands out is the logos and font. You'll notice this is one that would have come straight from EMD. It's a later number. And you can see it has the uh, shield there. As this one just says, we can handle it. The font is all different. So that is a quick way right there to uh, spot the differences. Again, this would represent one that Union Pacific converted themselves, number 8019. And this is one that EMD would have built just for Union Pacific. Another difference would be the handbrake. The one that Union Pacific would have converted had a ratchet style handbrake and the EMD version had the brake wheel. Another difference would be the style of beacon that was used. Another spotting difference would be the style of radiator grills, as you can see here. So like I said, lots of road number specific details in this ready to roll line. Okay, let's fire up this Ekonomi decoder from Soundtracks and let you have a listen to the dual sugar cube speaker. I did lower the master volume a little bit just for the sake of this video. You don't have to do it because it sounds amazing, but my camera mic is extremely sensitive, so I do turn that down a little bit so it doesn't blast you away. As with Soundtracks products, apply track power to start it up. You will notice I removed the other locomotive from the track. Uh, they both sound the same. I saw no reason to blast both of them at you. Uh, we will run both of them together though a little bit later in the video. I'll go over uh, some of the uh, basic sounds, long horn, short horn, and uh, dynamic brakes, uh, long horn. That's function two. Function three, short horn. Function four, dynamic brakes. And you have some other sounds in there that uh, you can check out, the uh, coupler clash and things like that. Turn on the headlight and the beacon. Let's go. That runs really nice.
Pretty nice. Function 8 will mute it. And then I'll give you a quick uh, quiet run by. Hey, that's pretty good for a uh, ready to roll drive line. I also wanted to show you some of the uh, fuel tank piping that you can add yourself. There's one, there's one, there's some on the other side. And here at the back also some more piping. Uh, there's a separate piece I applied that goes uh, across the bottom of the tank. So it does come with uh, some extra detail parts if you uh, don't mind putting them on yourself. One more thing I would like to point out. Uh, one of my locomotives, I noticed I had a problem with one truck when it tried to uh, navigate through turnouts, it was uh, kind of like getting hung up at the frog. And uh, so, first thing I did was check uh, the wheel gauge with my NMRA uh, standards gauge. And I found two wheels that were uh, out of gauge. They were actually uh, too close together, squeezed too close together. Uh, it's a simple fix. I thought I'd point it out to you. Uh, all you need is a, maybe a pair of tweezers and a, a little flat uh, blade screwdriver. But you want to pop off the bottom cover of the trucks and you'll be able to lift your wheel set right out. And if you've never done it, that's how you do it. And then the wheel sets themselves are uh, basically on a plastic axle. And uh, you can just twist the wheels on either side and and move the the wheel set the metal wheel in and out on the uh, plastic axle so that's how you adjust the gauge of your wheels so if you happen to have some that are out of gauge uh, it doesn't happen very often but it did happen with one of my locomotives it was an easy simple fix for me and uh, like I said if you've never done it it's uh, pretty easy that's how you do it pop the cover off and just twist the wheels on that plastic axle. It's a geared axle and uh, you'll be able to move the, the metal wheels in and out just to adjust it. And again, use your standards gauge. This thing is a lifesaver. The Economy also supports advanced consisting. Um, so before I start running these, I do want to say uh, it's best to uh, give these a little bit of a break in when you get them before you run them together. Uh, mine, when I got them, uh, they ran pretty close together at uh, real low speeds. Uh, higher speeds, uh, they were off by about uh, 10 scale miles per hour from each other. I used my uh, AccuTrack speedometer. Uh, after uh, a little bit of running, uh, they really came close together. Uh, they might be off maybe four right now. Uh, I have not adjusted any of the speed curves to speed match them yet, uh, but they should run pretty well together even at that because even at uh, mid speed, uh, they were they were right on at mid speed. It was just the high, high max speed. Um, so I'm not getting crazy yet with that as far as a uh, high speed wide open running anyways. Most people don't do that. Um, so it's not a, an issue for me right now. But definitely, before you do any speed matching of your own, uh, definitely give these a, a break-in period.